Good morning, Living Water. We're excited to be coming into your house. We're missing you, and we can't wait to see you and join you, but today, we're gonna to join you in your living room. From my house to your house, we're coming into you to bring worship. So get yourself ready. Get yourself ready to sing and worship with our praise team. We want you to stand up. We want you to lift your hands. We want you to sing out loud to God. Right? Nobody's there except for you and your family and God. That's why we're here, is to worship Him. Also, we are also going to be taking our offering and our tithes. And, and this is a moment where you can do that as well. We share how you can do this. Long distance tithing and offering. So what you can do, there are many ways that you can give. So you go to our app store and download our app. It's the Living Water app. And you just click on the uh, giving there. Or you can text LW Cheyenne at 77977. You can do it that way. Or you can go to our website at livingwatercheyenne.com. Click on the giving part. And when you do that, you can give that way as well. Another way is, as many people have been asking, so how can we mail in our tithes? And so we have a place where you can mail that as well. We have an address. It is 508 West 27th Street, uh, 82001. You can mail in your tithes there uh, and just go that route. We also want to pick up your prayer requests and praises. So if you have a prayer request or if you have a praise, we have on our website, which is, again, livingwatercheyenne.com, Go to the prayer request part. Just click on that link. And when you do, you'll be able to bring up a prayer request or praise. Put it on there. We want to we hear from you. We want to pray for you. We want to reach out to you. We have a fantastic prayer team who wants to love on you. Well, listen, let's get ready to worship. I'm excited to see how God is going to speak into your life. Let's do it together. Thank you. 
that he's going to bring to us today. Uh, we thank you for your son's sacrifice on the cross for us, as always. And uh, we thank you for your goodness and your kindness towards us, towards all nations, Lord God. May we cry out to you as we've never done before. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, I don't know about you guys, but, man, it was a stressful day today, right? I'm stressed out. But what a better time to take communion with one another, right? When when we are we are stressed out, there's no better time to remember the Lord's sacrifice for us and what he did for us, amen? So there's this medical term, and uh, this is going to be really interesting how it's signed, but it's called hemitidrosis. And I hope I'm saying that right for all you teachers and nurses out there. It's hemitidrosis. So it's a condition, um, it's, it's very, very rare. There was only a few cases of it throughout the 20th century, but it's a condition where you sweat blood, right? And when Jesus introduced this new covenant to us with the, the communion, this ordinance of the church, that same night he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and it says in the word of God that he he was praying, and as he was praying, he sweated blood, or this, this condition happened to him. And uh, this is from WebMD, and it says, Sometimes this condition seems to be caused by extreme distress or fear, such as facing death, torture, or severe ongoing abuse. It's probably where the term sweating blood, meaning a great effort, comes from so we just got to remember when Jesus was taking this cup of the new covenant and his body and his blood was sacrificed for us 
this is like a pre-game meal for him. This is, he got this encouragement. He was like, I got to face this. Like, I know the Lord wants me to do this. But that's what the NFL players, they would, they would take a pre-game meal before each game so they can have extra strength and extra protein running through their veins. And that's exactly what this meal should be to us as well. To, to have this pre-game before this very stressful event within our lives. Amen. So why don't we go to the Lord and let's take communion together. So thank you, God, for, for second chances. Thank you for third chances. Thank you for fourth chances. Man, you're so good to us, Lord. Thank you for being there for us when we had no idea you were there for us. From relationships that we never were supposed to be a part of that you protected us from. From places we weren't supposed to be at that you protected us in. And we just uh, thank you for all those moments within our lives that we'll see one day. In uh, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Open up your Bibles. Let's jump into it right now. Go to 2 Chronicles. That's in the Old Testament. We're going to look at two verses today. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. We're going to look at verses 13 and 14. Man, I've been exciting. I've been itching to, to preach this to you all week long. Man, God has been putting it on my heart. And there's going to be some things that we're going to pull out of this. And it's going to blow your mind. That's what it's going to do. It's going to blow your mind. So 2 Corinthians, or I'm sorry, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, looking at verses 13 and 14, it says this. If I close up the heavens and their rain and send any of the disasters you described, drought, locusts, pestilence, to ravish the land and people, and my people, who are known by my name, humbly pray, follow my commandments, and abandon any actions or thoughts that might lead to further sinning, then I shall hear their prayers from my house in heaven. I shall forgive their sins, and I shall save their land from the disasters. My sermon title today is called Becoming a Praying Nation. So Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Your word is powerful. Your word is good. And Father, we are a, a world. We are a nation, God, who ne desperately needs you right now. And so, Father, I pray, God, that you would open up our eyes, God, to, to show us what you want us to see, to what you want us to hear. And God, and we're, just, we're just asking that you move in us right now, Father. So, God, remove all distractions. God, remove all of uh, our pets getting on our couches and doing all that stuff. And so, uh, Lord, remove Fido out of the way. So, God, that you, we can hear you. So, Father, we love you. We praise you and ask the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, the world has found itself in a pandemic. We have labeled what's going on with this coronavirus a pandemic. And this pandemic, this virus, this COVID-19 is raising havoc across the world. What we're seeing here are people getting sick, being put on ventilator, ventilators, and some, some are actually dying. Some people are dying. Folks are losing their jobs. Some can't make the mortgages on their homes, and so they are being shoved out of their homes. Some people are wondering where they, got, they can go find a meal, where they're going to eat. Loneliness is setting in. Depression is digging its roots deeper and further down into the ground. No one can gather in big groups. Shopping for groceries has changed, maybe changed for the rest of our lives. Restaurants have now become takeout or drive through And this nation and our world is on complete shutdown. It's just on shutdown. But can I tell you something? There is an answer. And there is a cure. And his name is Jesus because he's the healer of all things. You see, our world 
needs a healing. And it's time for you and I to start praying for the healing of our land and asking God for forgiveness. Because prayer is powerful when we use it. Did you hear what I said? I said prayer is powerful when we use it. Often folks tell me, Pastor, how do I pray? I mean, I don't know how to pray. I think I have a clue, but I don't know what to do. Can you, can you teach me how to pray? Can I tell you something? That is the same exact question the disciples asked Jesus one time. Listen to what he says here in Luke chapter 11, in verses 1 through 4. It says this, Another time Jesus was praying, and when he finished, one of his disciples approached him, and the disciple said this, Teacher, would you teach us your way of prayer? John taught his disciples his way of prayer, and we're hoping you'll do the same. So Jesus says this, here's how to pray. Father in heaven, may your name be revered. May your kingdom come. May your will be accomplished on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the food we need for tomorrow. And forgive us our wrongs, for we forgive those who wrong us. And lead us away from temptation and save us from the evil one. Then we jump down to verses 9 and 10, and it says this. So listen. This is Jesus still speaking. He says, so listen. Keep on asking, and you will receive. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open for you. All who keep asking will receive, all who keep seeking will find, and doors will be open to those who keep knocking. You see, the disciples didn't come up to Jesus and say, hey Jesus, will you teach us how to speak to the crowds like you do? Will you teach us how to write great sermons? Or will you teach us how to do miracles and healings? None, they didn't ask any of that stuff. They went through the whole thing with Jesus, through his ministry, and all they wanted to know was, Lord, can you teach us how to pray? Can you teach us how to pray? We, as a nation, we, as individuals, we need to be asking God, Lord, can you teach me how to pray? Because when we pray, you know what praying is? It's conversing, it's listening, and it's doing. That's what prayer is. Lord, teach us. To pray. I don't know if you know this or not, but prayer is powerful. It is extremely powerful when you use it. Listen to this. In Acts chapter 12, there's a scene that happens. King Herod has caught two disciples. One is James and the other is Peter. James has already been put to death. They killed him by the sword. He is actually the first disciple of Jesus who is put to death. Now King Herod has Peter. He's got Peter locked up and Herod kind of likes what's happening here. He's got the taste of killing Jesus' disciples in his mouth. So he's got Peter in prison and Peter's in prison awaiting trial and they're not going to put him out until after the Passover is done. So there he is and he's just locked up. <laughs> the Bible says that he's in deep sleep right now. Listen to this. Listen to what, what happens here. The church, in Acts chapter 12, verses 5 and 6, the church has gathered to pray on behalf of Peter. Can I tell you something? Peter is in deep sleep right now. It's late at night. Can I tell you something? They weren't gathering for a prayer meeting just on 6 o'clock on a Tuesday. They were gathering all the time. And they were praying into the wee hours of the night. In fact, all the way through the night, praying for Peter to be released from prison. Check this out in verse 5. Acts 12, verse 5 and 6. It says this. During Peter's imprisonment, the church, right, the people, the body, the church prayed constantly and intensely to God for his safety. Listen to this. This is the cool part. Their prayers were not answered until the night before Peter's execution. <laughs> Peter's in deep sleep. Guards everywhere. Chained to him. Hands, feet, everything. Guards guarding the gate. Guards guarding the prison. And an angel of the Lord shows up and wakes him up. Peter, get up. The gate, the prison doors open. He's like, Peter, get up. Peter is kind of groggy. He's like, what is going on? Chains 
The chains are falling off. All the prison guards are asleep. They aren't budging. They're like in deep sleep. And Peter's getting up and so finally stands up and the <laughs> angel says, get dressed. Peter's like, all right, he gets dressed. He's still kind of standing there, kind of groggy. He's like, come on, man, put your coat on. We got to go. He walked out of the prison over the guards, walked through the prison cell door, walked out of the prison, walked down the street. And as they're walking through the gates of the city, the gates just open up on their own. And they walked out together, him and the angel of the Lord. And when he got out, the angel disappeared and Peter's on his own. And once, once the angel left him and he realized he's on his own, and what just happened to him? Peter's like, yeah, I'm out of here. And he took off and he went to the house where the people were praying. And he just showed up. Uh, and prayer was powerful. You see, prayer is powerful when you use it. Are you with me? Are you understanding? Which brings me to the conversation that God has with King Solomon here in chapter 7 of 2 Chronicles. Listen to this. This is, this is powerful. This is about us. Listen, it's about the time that we're in right now. Listen to what happened. So King Solomon just got finished praying for his nation. They just built the temple for God. It's done. There's a dedication. And King Solomon just got done praying for his nation. And in his prayer, we see in chapter 6, we see him starting to praise the Lord. And then he says, Lord, I want you to re remember the promises that you made to my father. I want you to keep those promises and, and, and keep them for me. And he, and he prayed for the temple that was just built for him. He was asking God to, to listen to his people's prayers, to Israel's prayers. He says, listen, I want you to judge my people for their actions. He says, and he also asked them to forgive his people and return them to their land. And he prays for righteousness to happen throughout his kingdom. And basically, be in tune to the heart of God is what he was asking. And listen to how God answer Solomon in verse 13 of chapter 7 in 2 Chronicles. Listen to this. So God says this. He says, if, if I close up heavens and their rain and send any of the disasters you describe, like drought, locusts, or pestilence to ravage the land and people. We just witnessed over the summer Australia and their fires, and no rain came. Almost took out a lot of that country. I close up heavens in the rain. Locusts going all out. There's, there's a, a massive uh, locust all over in Africa. And then this, this pandemic, this virus, this plague, is happening now, not only in America, but all over the world. And we've given it a name. We've given it a name called coronavirus or COVID-19 all across the world. And listen to what, Jesus, or what God says here. Are you seeing in verse 13 what it says here? Listen to what it says here in verse 14. And he says, and my people who are known by my name humbly pray Follow my commandments, meaning seek my face, and abandon any actions or thoughts that might lead to further, uh, further sinning. Then I shall hear their prayers from my house in heaven. I shall forgive their sins, and I shall save their land from the disasters. Listen to this. God heard Solomon's prayer, which indicates there's always hope if God's people will fall on their knees and pray as people did as the dedication of Solomon's temple. We need not merely talk about prayer. We must actually pray. And when we do, we may be able to move the hand of God to bring restoration. Listen to this quote that I heard from Pastor Tony Evans, Dr. Tony Evans. He says this, prayer is an earthly request for heaven intervention. Prayer is an earthly request for heaven intervention. <laughs> it is the tool we have been given in order to pull something down out of the invisible and into the visible. And when he, when God spoke and he talked about when my people 
who are called by my name. Let's break this down. Let's look at this together. Grab your pencil. Grab your highlight. I highly recommend that you, you write in your Bible. It's okay. God, God is cool with you writing in his word. Circle some words in there that you can study it and, and look into it, right? God's word is not only to be picked up and read. It's to be studied and it is to speak to you. So let's let it start speaking to us. Let's break this down, right? He says, if my people who are called by my name, that's you and me. If you're a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, did you know that you are his people? That you belong to him. You are his people and you are called by his name. Right? This is a reference to God's covenant people. This is how we can approach God through the new covenant uh, relationship that we have with Jesus. Listen. In this Bible, right here in this verse, he's talking about you in the Old Testament. If my people who are called by my name, listen, he's calling you out. He's saying, Jeff, you're my son. Tammy, you're my daughter. He's calling you out. If my people who are known by my name, right, he's calling us together. He's calling us right now together at a moment like this, at a time like this. My people who are called by my name. He says, if they would humble themselves. Come on. Humble themselves. Listen, God seeks those who humble themselves. Humble Christians get through to God for they renounce pride. Hum uh, humility includes the idea, uh, humility includes the idea of dependency. Can I tell you something? Without the Lord, we can do nothing. And that's why verse uh, John 15, 5 says this. And you've known this. You, you've heard this. It says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you abide in me and I in you, you will bear great fruit. Without me, you will accomplish nothing. Many Christians don't pray because they are too proud. We don't pray because we're too proud. But Lord, I don't know how to pray. Pastor, I don't know how to pray. Can you teach me how to pray? Disciples wanted to know that. There is power in prayer when we use it. You have that power inside of you. Why? Because when my people who are called by my name, he's talking to you. If we would just humbly pray. Family, we got to remove pride in our life. And it's time that we humbly pray. It's time that we get on our knees and we start becoming a praying nation. It says that we need to seek his face. Oh, I love this part. Seek his face. If we go all the way back to verse three of chapter seven, what you're going to see is that Solomon just got done praying. And when he got done praying, fire from heaven came down and consumed his offering and God's glory filled the temple. Did you know in part of that offering, uh, he, he sacrificed 20,000 oxen. He also sacrificed, listen to this, 120,000 sheep lambs. That is 140,000 animals on an altar. And fire from heaven came down. Can you picture that? That is a, that's a huge sacrifice. And fire from heaven came down and consumed it. And when that happened, guess what? God's glory filled the temple. And it was so thick and so powerful, the priests couldn't even get into the temple. That's how thick the glory of God was. And Israelite, the nation of Israel, saw that happen, saw the glory of God. And when they saw that, they went to their knees, put their faces down on the ground, and they started worshiping God right there, giving thanks saying, he is good, his love endures forever. When my people who are called by my name humbly pray and seek my face, <laughs> prayer that moves God comes from a recognition that sin turns his face away from us and turns us away from God. See, listen, seeking his face is approaching God on his terms. It is not a process of negotiation. 
The good news is that God invites us to see his face. You see, he is open to us. Lord, we seek your face. What shall we do? What do you want me to do? Not, God, if you do this, I will do this. It comes to a point, ladies and gentlemen, in our lives where we got to humbly pray and say, God, what do you want from us? Because we'll do it. Because I'm yours. And then it says, and turn from their evil ways. Stop sinning. Stop getting into sin. This is the idea of turning away from the things that displeases God and turning towards something that pleases him. And if we, as God's people, want God to show his face to us, we must turn towards him in repentance. And this involves us turning our backs to sin. If my people, who are called by my name, humbly bow down and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, Jesus said, or God says this, then I will listen to their prayers from heaven. Listen to this. He said, I will hear you from heaven. Right? From heaven. Where's earth from heaven? He says, I will listen from heaven. He is on his throne. He is in heaven. He is the one God who reigns. He is the God who is alive. And he says, I'm listening to your prayers because you are seeking my face. You are bow you're humbly bowing and you're turning from me. I will listen. I will listen from heaven. He says, and I will forgive your sins, our sins. And then he says, and I will heal your land from disaster. Oh, church, we need a healing in our land. I love what verse 15 says. Verse 15, check it out on your own. Verse 15 says, and his eyes will be opened and his ears will be attentive to our prayers. Jesus is watching and listening to us. You can't fool him. people who are called by my name if they would just humbly pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land church it's time it's time that America, it's time that Wyoming, it's time that Cheyenne, and it's time that planet Earth, it's time for our land to be healed. It's time for us to do our part. It's time for us to pray. It's time for us to seek his face. It's time to, for us to turn from our evil ways, and it's time to come back to him. Can I tell you something? God did this one time before. God did this one time before in a land called Nineveh. Nineveh, Jonah was supposed to go in and tell Nineveh, hey, here's what's supposed to happen. And he went in and he told, the, he told this little town, this, this city, listen, you guys are sinning and God's going to destroy you if you don't repent. I want to show you something. In, in, in Jonah chapter 3, verse 6 through 10, it says this, right? So word got to the king of Nineveh. When the king of Nineveh heard what Jonah was saying, right? God's going to destroy your land if you don't repent. Check this out. The king of Nineveh, who is the ruler of this, this country, this city, who is overseeing this, this place, right? Listen to what the king did. The leader, he was saying, heard what Jonah was saying. He stepped down from his throne, right? He stepped off the throne, took off of his authority, and went down as a peasant and took off his royal robes. He dressed himself in burlap and sat on a heap of ashes. His authority, his power could not save them. The king of Nineveh couldn't do it. And he knew there was only one way. So then check this out. Then the king and his nobles sent this decree throughout the city. No one, not even the animals from your herds and flocks may eat or drink anything at all. People and animals alike must wear garments of mourning, and everyone must pray earnestly to God. 
They must turn from their evil ways and stop all their violence. Who can tell? Perhaps even yet God will change his mind and hold back his fierce anger from destroying us. When God saw what had been done and how they had put a stop to their evil ways, he changed his mind. And he didn't carry out the destruction he had threatened. Can I tell you something? If my people, who are known by my name, listen, church, it's time that we need to start getting on our knees, putting our pride aside, start humbly praying, start seeking his face, and saying, Father, forgive me of my sins and heal our land. It's time to do that. It's time for you and I to do that. And can I tell you something? Right now, in the world right now, we are seeing this happening. What we, I just read to you from Nineveh, from Jonah. What happened in Nineveh is happening right now. In the country of Kenya and Italy and Brazil, we are seeing people as of two weeks ago coming into their town squares and all through the night, like when Peter's church was praying for him, all through the night, they are constantly coming and praying and bowing down and worshiping God and praying out to him. And there's, I don't understand, I don't speak Kenyan or uh, Italian or Brazilian kind of stuff. I don't speak any of that stuff. Um, I just don't. But you can hear them crying out to God. They're just praying and, and seeking his, his face saying, God, heal our land and forgive us. I wonder if America is there right now. I wonder if America is just too proudful or prideful to do this. Check this out. Here's the other thing. I'm actually hearing from all, all, all over the world, people walking away from religion, people walking away from being Muslim or Buddhist or whatever, and they're walking away from their religion to walk into a relationship with Jesus. That's what's happening. The coronavirus is a thing that is causing destruction, but it's bringing people to Jesus. In the courtyards of prisons in the world, in the courtyards of prisons, prisoners are actually not spending their time lifting weights and playing ball or doing whatever it is that they're doing. They're actually getting down on their knees and they're praying that God would forgive them and heal this land. Just because you're in prison doesn't mean that you're not going to be affected by coronavirus. Doesn't mean that you're not going to get it from cell to cell, but that doesn't mean like when you're in jail and your family member gets it, what's going to happen? And they see that we need Jesus in our lives. Prisoners are getting it. Police officers in Venezuela are actually seeing, I mean, you can see the videos everywhere. They're all out there. Just type it in. You'll see it. It's amazing. Officers in Venezuela, police officers, are actually praying before they go out on their shifts. And you're seeing them like, I don't know, 40, 50, 100, 100 men strong, just praying. And they're not just in line, they're on their knees and they're praying to God. Police officers in Guatemala are actually going a little step further. There's this video I saw where they are putting speakers on the back of their trucks and they're driving through the streets of Guatemala and you see a police officer just reading the, the word of God getting out there. I'm telling you, the word of God is going to heal their land. It is that powerful. We also have seen the pharmacy workers are praying before their shifts. In fact, cars parked outside of hospitals are praying for the sick. They're honking their horns. They're singing worship songs. They're worshiping and praying for healing outside of hospitals. Children in uh, Mozambique, I think that's how you say it, uh, Mozambique, they're praying over maps. I saw this school of children. They're laying hands on the map of the world. And I saw this one, right? So, of course, they're little kids, and they're just praying on the, on the bottom. But this kid got on, on, a, on a chair, and he actually had his hands on North America. And I don't know what he was saying, but he was praying over North America. It's time that we become a praying nation to the one and only true living God. And just like Peter's church, we need to be praying intensely and constantly. Church, I'm wondering. You know what? I'm not wondering. 
I'm telling you right now, as the pastor of Living Water Community Church here in Cheyenne, it's time that I and my family, we, we have already and we are going to get on our knees and we're going to pray that God would heal our land and forgive us of our sins. It's time that America comes back to God. It's time that America surrenders to God and asks for forgiveness. That's what we need to do. We have gotten out of control. We have gotten nuts. And it's time for us to come and humbly bow before him and seek his face and say, Jesus, I need you now. Forgive me and heal our land. He will listen to us. He will heal our land. So Jeff and Billy Shelton, if you're listening, Jennifer, if you're listening, in Missouri, it's time to get on our knees. It's time for us to start praying. Jeff and Marnie and Jason, on your farmland, get down on your knees and, and start praying. Mike Gray, when you're, you're flying your plane, pray over the country, Mike. When you're, when you're in your, your homes, wherever you're at, go out into the backyard, bow on your knees and pray. It's time for us to humbly pray and seek his face. It's time that America comes back to God. It's time that America comes back to Jesus and we seek his face and we turn from our evil ways and we don't tell God what we want. We say, God, what do you want? It's time. It's time. Stephanie and Brandon, if you're watching, in England, it's time for us to pray. And wherever else you are, whoever else is watching, my buddy Cody and Jackson, I know you guys are getting hammered right now. It's time for us to pray, bro. Living Water Church, it's time for us to pray and seek his face and ask for forgiveness and ask him to heal our land. Now is the time. Now is the time. It's time that we become a praying nation. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the powerful and, and wonderful and healing name of Jesus. And Father, we're praying, God, that you would heal this world of this coronavirus. Father, we're praying that right now, those who are in the hospital beds right now with ventilators in their throats, Lord, I pray, God, in Jesus' name, that you would bring healing to them right now and that they no longer need a ventilator to help them breathe easy. God, breathe the breath of life into them right now. Father, we're praying, God, that these hospitals are going to see the sick of the coronavirus. People with this virus are going to walk out in, in, in droves, God, because they have been miraculously healed. Father, we're praying, God, that you would heal our land. God, we're praying, Lord, that those who are in isolation, God, right now, heal them in Jesus' name. Blow your breath of healing on them right now. God, that they would be able to breathe easy, God, that temperatures would drop and come back to normal, that the coughs would go away. Father, we pray, God, that you are the cure of this virus. And so, Lord, we who are are called by your name who are yours Lord forgive us God for the things that we have said and done God that are not right Father help us to get corrected help us to get right with you Lord God that we are no longer making negotiations in our prayers Lord but we are getting down on our knees and we're praying Father forgive us God forgive us of our sins and purify us Lord and Father, we know that you're listening to us. And we know, God, that you are forgiving us of our, of our sins. And God, that you will heal our land. I believe in God that you're going to be bring healing to our land. In fact, I already believe that you're healing our land right now. And so God, open our eyes so that we can see it. And Father, we love you. And we praise you. God, we chase after. Thank you, God, for the new normal of how to worship you. Thank you for bringing us back. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Listen, 
Jesus looks good on you. I love you. Shelly loves you. I can't wait to see you next week. God bless you.